So in today's class, class 63, we're looking into spring potential energy or elastic potential energy. We're also going to look at some questions that require us to conserve energy using springs. So to start, we're going to look at our spring potential energy formula. So the potential energy in a spring is measured in joules equals one half k as we saw last time is our spring constant measured in newtons per meter and x is our spring elongation or compression which is measured in meters. So if we check out a couple questions here, the first one asks us, a spring with a spring constant K of 100 newtons per meter possesses two joules of elastic potential energy when compressed. Calculate the spring's change in length from its uncompressed length. Show all work, including equation and substitution with units. So the first thing we'll do here is write down our equation. Our potential energy was two joules. That's equal to one half. K is 100 newtons per meter. And X is our unknown. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring everything down 2 equals 50 x squared we're going to divide both sides by 50 so we get 0 0.04 equals x squared if we take the square root of both sides we should end up getting that 0 0.2 meters is equal to x The next one here gives us 10 joules, and it gives us the compression now, so we're given x, and we have to find k. So I'll skip writing the equation, but I'll sub in right away 10 joules equals 1 half. k is our unknown, and 0 0.2 meters squared. So simplifying a little bit on the right hand side, we're going to get 10 on the left equals 0 0.02 times k. If we divide both sides by 0 0.02, we have 10 divided by 0 0.02 gives us 500 newtons per meter. This next series of images shows us um, a block on a spring that's oscillating back and forth. The order of the pictures here is picture one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it says here, notice the constant transition from elastic potential energy to kinetic energy but the total energy of the system always remains the same. The next question asks us, how is the potential energy stored in the spring different when it is compressed versus when it is elongated? So if you notice, I think it's picture four is when it's compressed, picture one is when it's elongated. So how does the potential energy differ? So you'll notice here the potential energy is actually the same and there's actually no difference. Now, if, you ask, if you're asked to reason, why is there no difference? Look at the equation here. It doesn't matter if x is positive or negative, okay? Because whether it's positive or negative, when you square it, you're always going to get a positive value. So the potential energy in the spring is always going to be positive. And if you notice in numbers 1 and 4, the spring is compressed or elongated about the same distance from equilibrium. 
Therefore, the potential energy is the same in both cases. It doesn't matter if it's compressed or elongated. So number four is an old regions question. It says, a toy launcher is used to launch small plastic spheres horizontally, and it contains a spring with a spring constant of 50 newtons per meter. So that's our K value. We'll start with that. And it's compressed a distance of 0.10 meters. So the first question says, determine the elastic potential energy stored in the spring when the ball, when the launcher, excuse me, is ready to launch the plastic sphere. So we're going to use our potential energy in the spring equation. I'm going to leave the units out here. We have one half, 50 times 0 0.1 squared. So if we put this all in our calculator, we have 0.5 times 50 times 0.1 squared. And we should get a potential energy of about 0 0.25 joules. The next part of this question says, the spring is released and a 0.10 kilogram plastic sphere, so now we're given a mass, is fired from the launcher. Calculate the maximum speed with which the plastic sphere will be launched. Neglect friction, show all work including equation and substitution with units. So one thing we have to realize for this question is that in our initial picture, we only have elastic potential energy. In our final picture, we only have kinetic energy. Okay? So if we were to write everything out, though, just to show this the long way, we have potential energy of the spring initial plus potential energy gravitational initial plus kinetic energy initial plus Q initial equals potential energy of the spring final plus potential energy gravitational final plus kinetic energy final plus Q final. Now we're going to go through these one by one to see what's zero. So it says neglect friction and there's no mention of internal energy, so Q's go away. Initially, let's see what's going on there. Initially, we'll make our initial position height zero, so our initial gravitational potential energy is zero, and since it starts at rest, our kinetic energy initial is zero. After the launcher has fired, the spring has completely decompressed, so there's no more elastic potential energy. There's also no change in potential energy, gravitational, because there's no change in height. We're looking at the instant it leaves the cannon, and it's fired horizontally, so there's no change in height at all. So what we're left with is that our potential energy in the spring initial is equal to our kinetic energy final. Now you can skip to this step right away if you can figure that out on your own, but it's nice to reason it out and make sure you understand why all of those things go away. So potential energy in the spring initial, we actually already found in the previous part, that's 0 0.25 joules. And our kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. M is given to us here. Make sure you put joules on that. Uh, we have our mass of 0.1 kilograms. And our velocity is our unknown. We'll call it v final. Don't forget that that's squared. So doing the math for this one, you should get the final velocity is equal to the square root of 5, which is about 2.2 meters per second.